Well, here we are back at the carb. I've taken it up the back and I've cleaned it all out. I've blown it out. I've bead blasted it. I've tidied up everything that I feel I possibly can. And I've got the new float here to go in. That should float up and down nice and easy in there. It must have had a bit of trouble with the float sticking. You can see it's got all little hit marks. Can you see all that? Yeah, I think it can. All little hit marks around here and there, and it's been flogged around here. And this housing here has had a good hiding. But look, I thought about tidying all that up, and I thought, well, you're just buggering up the whole thing. So I think it's just best to leave it as it is in this instance. Um, just that, that's part of the history of it. We'll leave it go. Um, we have the Sparex 24T um, seal kit. It's a S42540, and that's got our gaskets and bits and pieces in it. And when we first got the carb, we didn't have this speed screw. So um, this is idle speed. And so it'll just come in through here. We have this in stock. Um, I don't think I've got it on the website, really. Um, I should bloody smarten myself up, really, shouldn't I? <laughs> but anyway, we'll get there. So, we'll start off with this top section, with the main body. And the idea is to put this butterfly shaft in. So, the butterfly shaft on the old one, it looks to be the same. It's a Zenith 24T. The butterfly appears to be on the same angle. The nut at the end there seems good. So look, we'll just go with it, I think. Go with it and hope for the best. Now it looks like I need a little screwdriver. And these come assembled and nice new screws in the butterfly. So, if we put the new shaft in there, remember that was a little bit tight, wasn't it, when we first, when we first looked at it. So, we have the option of sneaking around behind you here. in my drawer and I have a little selection of reams for doing carbs. It's all I do with them, nothing else. They don't get used anywhere else. So this is a stepped ream. It, it goes from one size to the next in case we need to bore the housing out and put bigger bushes in, which we do from time to time. This one here is a quarter inch ream with a with a pilot, so um, it's actually a Briggs and Stratton tool. This one, when you looked at, um, um, I can't remember what it did on the Briggs and Stratton now, but that uh, it sort of come through and located in this one, and so you, you did the two surfaces at once. But um, nowadays, I've just turned that into a carb one, and this bloke once again that gives us quarter quarter in here but it gives us 5 16th in here. So 5 16th, that is normally the bush size for the outside there. So we probably won't need that one this time. I might get it started with this little fella. And I'll just get my little shifting spanner here. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking to keep this as true as I can as I go through. So this isn't going to be, this will probably follow the, follow the bore that's there. Now with the ream, you never turn it backwards, you always turn it forwards. So I've just gone in a millimetre or two. So that'll be good. You need it, you need it to support the shaft evenly, 
but you need it loose enough loose enough that you can get a nice um, get, get a free flowing movement so your governor's not working against that so I might just get some of this stuff out of the way a little bit um, this is just this is a straight straight flute ream and this is a um, spiral flute one I don't know if one will be better than the other it couldn't hurt to clean it though um, I've got a little pot here I use these paint measuring pots for all sorts of things <laughs> they're bloody handy and um, when you're finished with them you can always just clean them up yeah that's feeling good so I think we're both on the same track with that so I'll just try and bring this through nice and gentle I'm just letting that find its own way See, he's on his way through. We'll just check everything's going all right. Yep, I believe so. I might try the spiral one, the spiral one. Sometimes the four flute ones, they actually get, um, what should I say? They get a little bit um, sticky on you. And I have a, I have a spare number two Morse taper keyless chuck here, as you do. I'll just slide this in there. Just to give me a handle. That's straight through. Where can you see that? Yes, you can there. And that goes through the other side nicely. So, so that butterfly shaft should sit in there beautifully. I might have a tad looser than that actually. I'll, I might just tidy this one up a bit and run him in. Now normally you flood these with oil, but I don't. In, when I'm playing with alloy, I don't. The alloy is that soft, I don't believe I'm blunting it at all. So that's just a thou oversize. There we go. Yeah, we'll give it a bit of a hit with the brake cleaner. Swarth out of the way. And we'll find our new shaft that I've got hidden over in all the junk.
You can feel it's loose in this end, which is how we want it. In the back end, it's a bit firm. Okay, we'll tidy all this up. We'll pop a little bit of oil down in the in the centre here. Now, does that have any burrs on it? Doesn't appear to have. That's hydraulicing it in the end cap there. The little wells plug on this end just stopping it from going through. I'll dry that shaft off and we'll go again. Look, that's feeling pretty good. Right, so we have the butterfly shaft on. Now, the lever here, when this, when this lever here comes back, this piece here goes against that screw. So we know that that's idle. And as we open that up a little bit, that picks up our idle speed, so we know full open is somewhere like that. So let's pop this butterfly in. Now the butterfly it has a little chamfer on it. And you have to look for that chamfer. When you're blind, I'll fart and take some finding. Okay, the chamfer's this way. So the low edge is here, the high edge is there, so when it comes over against the wall of the Venturi, it seals it all off. So let's see if we can pop this in there. Now the trick is, to get that in place, and get all the holes lined up loosely. And you can see that down there now, that's closing, but the holes aren't lined up. So if I get my little O-ring pick, we'll try and get these holes all lined up. to go that way and this other one goes the other way we're just turning it slightly clockwise there I think we could go just a little bit more and that looks pretty good you can see pretty well straight through there so now if I'm correct here I'll put this on a little Phillips head screwdriver, I think. They seem to stick on a Phillips head screwdriver. Might be slightly magnetic or something, I haven't checked. And so we bring that down. We don't tighten them at this stage. Just take them firm and just back him off just that little bit. And the reason we do that is to try and centralise that butterfly down the throat of the carby here.
looks really good. When we look at the back there, you can't see any air through there at all. Okay, so I'm pleased with that. Now we just get a little bit of thread locker. It's just a little dob of Loctite. And now we know it's going to line up. We just get one at a time. Try not to move anything. Put one little dab of Loctite on. to happen but anyway what's happened we'll just pick up a little bit of Loctite on that screw oh, I'll go back on there bring him in here make him up firm Check that we're still in a nice place. We're still in a happy spot. It's got to be in a happy spot when you're working on tractors, eh? A dab of Loctite off the Loctite pool. <laughs> I will say it's hard to get good help, and when I'm working with myself, I, buddy, I know it. That's when I prove the theory. Okay, now don't over tighten them. Now let's have a look at that. That's nice and easy, nice and free. There's no problems with that. There's wide open, that's bloody riven that hard, she blow your hat off. Closed over, she's all nice and shut. So let's get rid of this. Loctite pool. Now the old one, the old bell crank here off the throttle. I'll just, I've got a tiny little vice on my best gear now. It's one of those little cheap clamp on ones, and I'll tell you what, it's pretty handy. Both these have to come off, so if that's set up there, this set up there, so this would end up facing out that way, we have to keep that orientation correct. Okay, so with the throttle closed off, okay, that's a bit firm on there, and I have seen this a couple of times um, that it gets quite. Um, they try and machine this nice and tight, but I believe it's a bit too tight sometimes. But it's not a big deal. We'll just get a file. And a couple of rubs across the top and you're done. They'll be nice and tight at least, won't they? It doesn't take much, it's just a, yeah, they must be trying to get it nice and tight and I reckon they make it a bit too tight. It's just tight on the flats, it's not tight on the thread. So what we'll do, we'll just start this nut without the spring washer. 
that should straighten everything up for us and then we'll just just try and use the thread to pull it all together she's not a 50 ton press just go steady <laughs> Okay, so that's up on the shoulder. Actually, it's got a little way to go. As you can see, it will have a gap. It will have a gap there, but um, we can go a little bit further. screw up so that that little lever pushes on this screw and doesn't jam the butterfly into the bore there when we undo it my very favorite one of my very favorite shift and spin bloody rough hey <laughs> okay give the spring washer a wipe Make sure that thread's looking good. Yep, I'm happy with that. We'll just lubricate it a little. Spring washer. Nut, it's got a slight round side and it's got a flat side, so. And you can't be too big fisted because you can see you haven't got the full thread. With the flats here, you've got a, um, you've got a lot of thread missing. shifter back the front today that's all right hey they go backwards down under and down in Australia anyway. <laughs> so look that's that's all you could ask for a little bit of move now that movement in a carby you do have to have that they all have a little bit of that and that's so uh, when it comes in here it actually um, centralizes itself nicely so what I look for now when we look down the hole there is I turn this okay that's just just touching the arm what are we going to go half one one and a half two Two and a half. And the reason I stopped there is when you look down the top there, down this end here, I can't quite get to show you that, but um, there's just an air gap of about a millimetre around this side, so the butterfly is not going completely closed, it's going over, hitting this stop, and there's about a millimetre gap around there, so that should have it idling okay shouldn't be a problem now in through here now I've cleaned all these threads and all out they're looking good there's plenty of thread in there from to get the pipe back in so I don't need to do any work there now in the kit you get a, a needle and seat that's this little fella here and you get a thick washer you must use the thick washer so I'll just pop a bit of oil on there just to lubricate things. That 
that's working nicely. Yeah, you want to turn? Ah. <laughs> okay. What else can we do there? Look, I, I think that's all we need to do there. All right, we'll get the rest ready. We'll get the base ready. Well, we have the base here on the carb and we've cleaned it all out. Now, one thing we couldn't do was get this jet out. Now, that bottom jet, I fiddled and I tried. And anyway, in the end, I've decided to leave it there. I've, I'm sure it's clear. Um, I can spray brake clean and everything through. I'm, I'm sure it's clear. I, I just think that if we persist in trying to get that out, I could probably drill it out and muck around with it, but then we'd have to have a new jet. And look, I believe the jet's probably the right size anyway. And um, I think I'm just better leaving it and saving the car rather than wrecking the whole show. So what do we start with? Well, one thing is this bolt's on there. Where are we? Like that. And if we look at the old photos that I took, the choke comes on the other side to the throttle. The throttle's on one side, the choke rod is on the other. So let's pop this choke back in. So all we have to do is undo these screws. I don't know if you can hear, it's getting a little bit windy outside, just a bit of an afternoon breeze. Nothing to worry about. Now, if we have a look There's a slight chamfer on this that way, so it's high that way. That's exaggerated so You'll notice the choke shaft if you look down the guts The choke shaft is not in the center of the of the hole on the car and so neither is this and you can see the way I do it I leave myself witness lines so if we put the shaft in the idea is to slide this bloke up like that and that'll give us access when it's closed to do the screws and this little chamfer will be going the right way so we'll slide that in so put a bit of, a bit of slip and slide on first pop that in and if you're not sure one side's got a thread and one hasn't you need access to these threaded holes so that'll give you an indication on where you should be okay let's pop this in in there go on oh look at that just lovely now once again you have to look and just check that it's sealing all the way around and I'm pretty happy with that. Oh, who took the Loctite pool? Okay now we've got to use little screwdrivers for these so they're going to be a pain in the bum. A little dab will do you, a little dab will do you there. And I use the Loctite on these because it just wouldn't be nice to have a little butterfly screw come off. I worked for John Deere as a service manager and um, when the little STX38 lawnmowers came out they had a Kohler engine in them. And not all that common but it was known to happen the butterfly screws would come off and the butterfly had flopped down and the motor had rev its ring off because you know full throttle full full load of juice and um, get a bit of a nasty knock and so what the fix was you popped the head off you put you picked the screw out of the top of the piston and <laughs> you put the bloody thing back together and away you went you put new screws in the butterfly and off you went it was a yeah, it sounded like the whole engine was buggered, but you'd get them going really quickly and that's all they wanted you to do. Bit of a bodge, but anyway, that's how it was. How it worked back then.
that's all right. Not all right, it's just bloody terrific, really. Okay, this little fella, he's our drain, our float chamber drain. So he should just screw in there. One of them goes right through and one doesn't. I'm pretty sure I've picked the right one. Here's Kelly Dog. Kelly Dog thought she'd come and see what I was doing. I can just see the bottom in there. So that, that needs to be nipped up firm. What we didn't do on this one is this idle mixture screw. So we might just address that while I'm here. While I'm here, I'm nowhere near it. Okay, now the base setting for this for the Ferguson tractors is right in and out one and three quarter turns. So I'm going to set it at that. So we just shut there. Now don't get big fisted and push it through the alloy. So let's go half, one, one and a half, one and three quarters. That should be okay. Right, get that back out of the way. Now these jets, we'll pop a bit of oil on the threads of them. This is just a bit of engine oil, a bit of 15, what is it? 10.30 that I had left over from service and duty's car. Hey, here's Kelly Dog again. What's going on? Someone must be making some noise. She's sitting right near me. If there's any thunder around, she sits here right on your right on next to your leg. She'd be like a dog shitting razor blades. But anyway. I'll put this in. Just let it find its own thread. Don't force anything ever. Just nip them up. Like when you when you take them up, take it up till it touches and just nip them. Because and look, they're in a housing here. They're not going to fall out and go down the paddock. So now this main jet um, had a cap on it. Now. The thing on the Fergie carby, and I can probably show you here, is the Fergie has an adjustable main jet. And it's still that same little hole down there, but they have a needle that you can screw up and it restricts that jet. And by restricting that jet, it, um, it limits the amount of fuel at full throttle. So this Fergie setup would fit in there, and it just screws straight in, I'm sure. But look, we'll here's the washer. Get the right washer. Let's go. So a little bit of lube on that again, and that's just an alloy washer in this kit. We've got a few threads there, so that's all right. That's nipped up, that won't go anywhere. Got oh, some messy bastards around. Yeah. Okay, now the Venturi. You can see this little cutout here. That little cutout goes down over the over the tube. In we go. Good, bloody lovely. Now this gasket, these gaskets are always close but they always just don't quite fit some of them I reckon and look uh, all you have to do is this little bit here well you put a screwdriver there and push that down over the jet and I, and I can take it back off gently I can just cut that little piece out. Oh, Kelly dog, I didn't see you there. Hey, I knew you were there.
and sit down nicely there now. The holes are lined up, yep, the gasket's sitting down there. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now the float. The float sits in there with the top at the top. Funny that. And we should be able to sit this down like that. Just sit the top down. Nothing technical about that. And then these little screws over the back here. We'll just pop a little bit of oil on them and then we'll screw them in. Now as with anything, um, get all the screws started before you tighten any down. If you put this one in, tighten it down, you've got to move it a bit. You'll be undoing it. Now you put that bloody thing there. Look at that, that doesn't happen on the Fergies. Oh well. These screws in. Always use the biggest screwdriver you can for the job. So it supports it. I probably have a bigger one I could use here, I think. But anyway. Now once again, I'll just try that bigger screwdriver. You get a bit more leverage. Yep, that's good. Okay, now once again, take it up and you'll feel it just go firm and just just nip it. Just nip him. You've got a steel bolt in a muck metal housing. It's only shit metal, most of these carbs. I think in America they call it pot metal, do they? Leave that in the comments. Just then I'll know stuff. Yeah, I'll pop a bit of oil on here. I don't think I did that before. Bloody shoddy workmanship, really. Okay. What well, did we decide before? Two and a half turns we went, didn't we? That's just touching, just touching there. Okay, half, one, one and a half, two and a half. Look, that's all right. That's good. So there you go. I, I've got no parts left over. We have a, the proper gasket is here to go on the carb. Now that's just slightly out on this. Let's just have a look here. Yeah, so that might be a little difference. The carb bolt, this, this gasket, it's made for this Fergie carby. But look, that bolts up. 
that's perfect with the holes on this one it's out a little bit and line this one up uh, that far out so I'll have a look at work and see if I have a better gasket for that that fits better I don't know if I have or I haven't but um, if not I'll just get a wad punch and we'll just elongate this hole a little and I probably have a wad punch just over And look, only because my dad has gone into care recently and he says, here's all these old tools, getting rid of all that shit. So, <laughs> okay. So they're just here on my bench. I haven't done anything with them. So. I don't know what you've been cutting with that. Cardboard. So look, that's that's about the right size too. Okay, let's have a go at this thing. So if we're at the hole there and we come over exactly that far. Now that's a metric measurement. I'm just taking a fly sheet off there. Now we'll do the same again. Come out about here. This one could come just a fifteenth further. Actually, they could both go a, a little. How are we going there? Look, that'll be fine. That'll seal up nicely. We have a good seal pretty even around here. The bolts will pull through, so they'll be happy with that. I'm just going to check across the top here, and look, that's pretty good. Very little. Well, there you go. I think that'll do our little carve, our little Alice Chalmers EB carve, I believe it is. I keep going out of range a bit, but that's because I'm sitting. This is straight in front of me. That's our little EB car. We'll give it a bit of a blast and then I'll take a couple of photos for just a bit of an end pick and we'll go from there. So there you go. Like, subscribe, make a comment. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next job.